My name is Garrett Secchi, 21 years old. The first knife I made took me about 40 hours to complete. I had nothing but a hacksaw and files to do it, but it started a love for my life. You know, ever since then, I was hooked on it. My name's Trevor Crow. I've been making knives since I was probably 10 or 11 years old. Knife making for me is a vacation. Every time I'm on that forge, that's what I do for fun. If I win the $10,000, Oh, my wife's already cabbaged onto that money. I won't ever see a dime of that. <laughs> my name is Victor Gonzalez. I am 32 years old from San Antonio, Texas. Knife making has veered me away from the area that I lived in. You know, it was surrounded by gangs and drugs. I started making knives, and it steered me right, along with my son, my family, they, they keep me on the straight paths. I'm Mitchell Ray Green. I'm 56 years old. From day one, when I started watching Forge in Fire, I was fascinated by it. I would love to win the $10,000, hell yeah, who wouldn't? But my goal is actually just make the second round, because I've got buddies that got eliminated in the first round. I said, well, hell, I got to do better than them. Make it to the finals, I could really rub that in their face, you know? <laughs> Blade Smiths, welcome to this outdoor edition of our Forge in Fire competition. You're about to engage in three rounds of edged weapon making competition specifically designed to test every aspect of your skills all in front of your panel of expert judges. These are the guys that determine which of you is the next Forge and Fire champion. So let's go ahead and meet them now. Up first, two-time Forge and Fire champion, Ben Abbott. Next, historic weapons recreation specialist, David Baker. And last, edged weapon specialist, Doug Markaita. Gentlemen, each one of you is engaging in a profession that is thousands of years old. And today, we brought you out into the middle of nowhere because we're sending you back in time. In today's competition, we're doing a throwback to the Iron Age, and you're gonna forge just like the Smiths from 650 BC. If you take a look around, you'll notice there's no electricity, no power hammers, no presses. We don't even have the battery-operated handheld grinders out here for you guys. A slight feeling of dread washes over me. Not having power tools means I'm going to have to work a whole lot harder to move that steel. In today's competition, you will just use coal forges, hammers, anvils, and blacksmithing tools to make a dagger. Your daggers must fall within the following parameters. The length of the blade must be between 10 and 12 inches. It must have an integral guard and a through tang. You'll have to make a dagger using those two pieces of 1095 steel by the fire. You'll have just three hours in this first round of competition. If you make it to the second round, you'll attach handles to those blades so that we can test them for strength and durability in a bone chop and for edge retention in a stab and slice. Gentlemen, do your best work, because after this round and after the judges have evaluated what you've done, one of you will have to surrender your blade and leave the forge. Good luck, bladesmiths. Your time starts now. <laughs> Here we go. Now, there are two pieces of high carbon steel leaned up against that fire pit. So these guys have to find a way to divvy that up. How is it best done? For each pair, like I would just grab a piece of steel and say, all right, you and me, we're going to do this together. Whichever of our fire gets high first, we stick the bar in that one. Right. Get it hot in the middle, then take a, a chisel and cut it in half. The biggest thing is to get my coal forge lit. Can't make a knife if you can't start your coal. What I know about coal, we just slowly trickle it in from the sides and start getting a little dome. Typically, when I use coal, I have a hair dryer. So on and off switch, turn it off, turn it on. Connected to the bottom of these forges, there's a hose and a manual blower that these guys have to crank constantly to maintain a high volume of airflow on those flames. If you don't crank it, it will turn off on you, and it is hell starting over again. I'm trying to get this cold forge going, man, and it just ain't happening. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. This hand crank forge is kicking my ass. Come on, cold burn. It's so aggravating. You know, that's why modern smiths use propane these days. We not in the horse and buggy days anymore. It's a, a problem in and of itself, just to keep a cold forge lit and at the correct temperature, and a lot of care and feeding. Whereas propane forge, you light it, and you forget about it. Sure enough, it started getting air then and started catching. There we go. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I feel very comfortable working coal. Coal is the only thing I've ever used to forge knives. 
that fire started really quickly for Trevor. Getting off to a good start. I think the hardest part of this challenge is no electricity. Back in the day when I first started, I didn't have any power tools, but I am a little older, and this is going to be trouble, I think. <laughs> what I find exciting about this is that it is pure manpower all the way through. I'm experienced with coal forging. I've done this 100 times. Look how nice Garrett's fire is over there. It'll heat that steel up no problem. So I'll be sharing my steel with Trevor. There we go. Garrett's just going to go for it, man. He wants his steel right now. <laughs> Give it to me. Give it to me. Get it! Ah, there we go. Thank you, sir. There you yeah, go. Right. Done. Got what gen you want? I'll take the smaller piece. All right. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get my tilt forged out. I'm just free-handing it, trying to make it symmetrical. So when we say dagger, we mean the edges should be of equal length. I mean, you can have a double-edged blade that isn't a dagger. The very first thing we're going to do is start chopping into cow bones. So I want to leave it thick and heavy because cow bones are hard. Oh, yeah. My game plan is to start tip first. I want to get the, the life in it to, to at least get it looking like a dagger. Looks like Victor's got a tip in his blade. Good for him. Forging my tip, trying to burn it, because that's the most part that can burn. You got to start watching your metal, especially with that heat, the coal forge heat, that can easily burn it. It only takes just a few seconds to really burn up that steel. I definitely want to be a good example for my son. So being busy, working with your hands and knife making is definitely trying to steer him in the right direction. I can't wait till he gets uh, old enough to start making knives with me. That will make me teary. Blade Smiths, one hour has elapsed. You have just two hours remaining to finish your blades. So I got my tang established, and now I'm trying to figure out how to make the guard. An integral guard means that the guard is built into the actual entire piece of steel. I'm going to try to split like a two inch drift down the sides and then flare them out down from the blade side down towards my tang. What's awkward to me is that it's, he seems to be pulling those arms down from the blade side rather than from bending them up from the tang. By doing that, he kind of ruins the lines of that edge right there, doesn't yeah. he? I expect it to hopefully work and be a massive pain in the ass. As I'm working my steel, I have to constantly be vigilant of what the steel's doing, which is as important as the heat, where I've got to watch my temperatures in the fire, get it hot enough to work, but not too hot to melt. And when you try to constantly think about something, it draws your energy down. We've had coal forges before as challenges, but what makes this really more challenging, zero power tools. How does that factor in the overall fatigue when you're trying to get a blade done? Oh, yeah, it, it's very tiring having to swing a hammer for everything. This is both physically and mentally draining. All right, Blade Smiths, over half this competition has a lap. I've gone as far as I can go, really, on the knife. Well, let me start getting this guard worked out here now. I've never done an integral guard any time before. Oh, I cut my guard backwards. I was doing good, too, until that happened. What happened? Mitchell was going to cut the guards and pull them out but he put his lines in parallel with the edge, and then he cut the wrong side of the guard. Oh. He cut towards the tip, which now is going to change the length of his entire knife. Well, I have to do, since I cut my guard backwards right here, I have to cut this back a little bit, and I stretch this tilt back out and make parameters. I'm just so tired that I think I'm making mistakes. I'm just hoping something works for me. My game plan at this time is to forge out the guard rather than using a chisel because I don't want any stress points in that part of the knife. Victor, he's using the horn to hammer in, so it's almost like rounded around that. Victor's trying to curl the guards around. It's definitely uh, hard, but it's interesting to see what they came up with in the ancient ages. I'm just going to make a standard dagger-shaped blade, because I make very few daggers. I can feel myself getting woozy. Trevor is uh, not doing very well right now. Ooh, I don't know what's happening right here. Uh-oh. Oh, damn. Trevor's uh, taking a, a serious knee over there. 
This is the worst case scenario for me. I'm thinking, I'm done. I'm out. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, man, this is not good. Trevor is uh, not doing very well right now. We got this guy doing a coal forge. It's three straight hours of work. It's taken a toll on his body. I don't want to exit the competition because of my body giving out. I got to get back in there. I better slow down a little bit and pace myself because I do not want to end up on the stretcher. You all right, Bubba? I'm better. Blade Smith's two hours has elapsed. You have just 60 minutes remaining to finish your work. Because of the way I started my guard peeling from the top down, I now have this 90 degree corner. If I started chiseling from the bottom, I could have transitioned way easier into my blade instead of having this small, narrow, weak spot. Why would you do that? I'm a little bit worried about what Garrett's got going on. You see that long, straight section coming out of that guard, and then all of a sudden it flares fat. Yeah, I mean, it kind of is reminiscent of a spear point. I'm like almost done with the overall shape of my knife, and then I'll have to hammer in the bevels. With a single edge knife, you just have two bevels that you have to make sure are nice and level. With a dagger, you have four. This is normally hard with a grinder, let alone just using a hammer is even more rough. My blade looks pretty good. I have to just get ready for quench. As I'm heating up my blade, holy shit, the front tip kind of burned. Oh, oh man. Oh, man. Two inches have burned off. Now I have no tip. I need to draw this out two more inches just to meet the specs. Right now, I'm just swinging for dear life and uh, trying to get back in the game. 20 minutes, Blade Smith. My guard is really awkward and lanky. I want to try to spiral it around my tang. I am interested that Garrett did this Katzbolger style guard that wraps around right. and, and makes a big sort of disc. The sand is dripping down this hourglass, and I am just watching it fastly disappear. I still need to quench my blade. I felt comfortable with the quench. I felt like my blade is hardened. Getting ready to quench this blade. Whenever heat treating, heating your blade up with coal especially, there's always the risk of cooking your steel. I actually brought a piece of pipe with me. It's my heat treat oven. Mitch got kind of clever and brought a little two-inch pipe so he can heat that pipe up and not have to heat the knife over the flame. Pull it up out of oil, straight as an arrow. I'm happy. Five minutes. Five minutes, Bladesmiths. You're doing a little better physically than I am, but I'd like to be a little further along, but it's coming. It's nice to see that Trevor has come back into this yeah. and is re-engaging on his dagger. Now he's on the comeback. I see the sand in the hourglass, and it's dropping fast. I need to stop doing what I'm doing and get to Hartman. It is what it is. It is ugly. Five, four, three, two, one. Blade Smiths. This round of competition is over. Great guy. I'm happy with my blade. It's ugly, but I'm still just happy to have finished. Blade Smiths, secure your blades. We're going to meet you on the forge floor. All right, gentlemen, welcome to the forge. In the first round of this competition, we threw you guys back into the Iron Age by having you forge outdoors with coal forges. And now it's time for the judges to take a closer look at what you've done with your time. Mitchell, you're up first. Please present your blade to the judges. Well, Mitchell, there's a lot of mass still left on this dagger. It's uh, still very, very wide. And uh, I like that you're set up for a through tang, but it's become quite chewed up and kind of weak. So there's going to be some work needed down at this end of your dagger. All right, Victor, you're up. Well. I mean, you can see the dagger profile there. All in all, I think you did a really nice job putting this together. If you move forward, it's really going to be a matter of just really refining that shape down to, to a real true dagger shape. All right, Trevor, you're next. All right, Trevor, first up, I'm glad you're feeling well. You had to battle the elements. 
with no power tools, that you stayed in it, came back. Good job on that. Now, the thing that brings me pause is the area that you chiseled in here. That could be a stress riser right there. So if you move forward, you need to find a way to reinforce that simply because, well, we're doing a bone chop. But overall, it's got the makings of what a dag would be, and that guard is wide enough to where it would protect the hand. All right, Garrett, please present your blade to the judges. Well, Garrett, where you chiseled in for your guards here, you left a relatively small amount of material here, and in drawing out the rest of it, it all kind of got a leaf shape to it. It doesn't have a very traditional dagger shape. Also, where those chisel marks stopped, there's some pretty serious splitting. That makes this a very weak section. But you moved a lot of metal. You got a, a relatively lean blade. So, well done. All right, Blade Smiths, a decision has been made, and it's time for one of you Smiths to leave the forge. Garrett, your blade didn't make the cut. Garrett, you did a great job moving a lot of steel. But in the end, it doesn't really have a classic dagger shape. There's a lot of issues right there in the neck of that blade that would have to be taken care of in the second round. The rest of the knives just don't have those problems. Garrett, please surrender your blade. Just coming out here and, and being able to compete with some of the best in this in the country was an honor to me. And I absolutely enjoyed this time 100%. I gave it my all out there. And you know what? I'm proud of myself for even making it out here and doing this. Bladesmiths, congratulations. You've made it into the second round of this competition. Now that those blades have been tempered, and we're back here in the forge with all of the gifts that uh, modern technology is giving you guys, it's time to refine and grind those blades towards completion. In addition to refining your blades, you'll have to attach handles to them. You may only use natural material for your handles, and additionally, you must have a butt cap or a pummel on your blade, which must have the tang peened over on it to hold everything in place. You have just two hours in which to complete all this work so that we can test them for strength and durability in a bone chop and for edge retention in a stab and slice. After the time runs out and the judges have tested your blades, one of you will have to surrender your dagger and leave the forge. Good luck, your two hour starts now. We're back here with Modern Tools. How much of a difference does that make? Oh, it's gonna make a world of difference. You got two hours. You need Modern Tools to be able to do all the fixes that they need. Lord have mercy. We've actually got power now, and I'm ecstatic. Thank God for power tools. If Benjamin Franklin was here right now, I'd kiss him. <laughs> I needed to work on my tang. I had to reinforce it. I got my handle material cut up, and then I put two pieces on each side of it like a sandwich. That's going to give me a lot more strength in my handle. I do not like this construction. If you're going to do something this way, you're going to either need to run pins up along either side of the tang, or you're going to need to put pins through the tang and just pray that your glue doesn't pop those two pieces out. I'm very confident that this epoxy is going to hold because this is what I use at home, the same stuff. And I've never had any problems with it. So right away, Trevor goes over to the welder to weld what? Where those chisel marks came in, there were some cracks and some weak areas, so I would fill that with weld. I think it's a great idea. As I clean the welds, it looks to me like I have cured all of the cracks. He's got a nice, sleek-looking blade going on. You know, he, he did that welding to fix his problems, and now he's just doing a really nice grind. Oh, I need one of these at home. If I win the $10,000, I'd buy one of these sanders and just waste it on knife-making equipment. But my wife's going to use it for paying bills and wise uses of the money. She is way more responsible than I am. So I have my handle material. I grab deer antler and some leather. I set that down. I do have quite a bit of meat left on my knife, so I run to the grinder. What's his biggest challenge? First off, he has to take some of the mass out of that big beefy blade, and then you know he's got to make a, he's got to make it look like a dagger. Blade Smiths, one hour has elapsed. You have just one hour remaining to finish your work. I'm making good progress, but if I don't have a handle on it, it's going away, and so am I. Ha, ha, ha. Trevor over here is got tired of trying to enlarge a hole and keeps making his tang smaller and smaller and actually curved and it. And curved. To, yeah, to match the curvature of the uh, antler kind. I put the blade in the vise, tang up, and then started tapping the antler on to force it to fit. I've never done a pommel before, so 
I found me a nice round piece of brass that was about a quarter inch thick, and I leave it up to the knife gods to determine what happens from there. Oh, no. Uh -oh. Using a huge blacksmithing hammer to peen over a tiny little piece of tank. You should not be hitting that hard to peen. What, what do you that? expect is going to happen? It's going to snap off the last the little piece that he's working with. That little piece of steel that I'm calling my peen snaps off. Oh, what am I going to do now? I've never done a pommel before, and I leave it up to the knife guards to determine what happens from there. Uh-oh. It snapped off the last the little piece that he was working with. I'm screwed on that one. 20 minutes, Blade Smith. You got 20 minutes to figure it out. Oh, shut up. Now he's grinding on either side of the tank. Yeah. My solution would be take that handle off, go weld a piece of steel to the end of your tank, some mild steel, put it all back together. You don't have to worry about shortening your handle, and it means easier and faster. I'm down to the wire, and that clock is driving me crazy. I'm screwed. I grab a piece of leather, smear epoxy all over it. I'm not going to get a pommel on it, unless it's a damn leather pommel. And this is what I'm calling a pommel. It is what it is. I thinned out the blade quite a bit, but I haven't even touched my handles yet, so I'm way behind. Not a lot of time to get a through tang butt cap on and then peen all that over and get it ready for testing. <laughs> One thing Victor has to keep in mind is that that leather stacking takes a lot of compression. The leather pieces are time consuming, but I've made deer leather knives before and I always stack the leather. I still have to shape the knife and sharpen it, put my pommel on. Victor's running out of time in a hurry. At this point, I'm feeling the pressure. I know this thing needs to have a good, strong edge on it. So now I'm making four or five quick passes until I get me a decent edge on there, because it's going to take a lot of abuse. So I'm building this thing tough. That's all I'm doing with that. Blade Smiths, you have less than 10 minutes remaining to finish your work. I'm able to get my pommel on, but it's not peened enough to hold the butt cap in place tightly. Uh-oh. Trevor's butt cap is still spinning. I moved the butt cap enough to get epoxy underneath it, but my blade is still not sharpened. I can't wait for this epoxy to dry. I am running out of time. Victor's really behind on time here. Trying to get this handle assembled here in the last few minutes. Oh, 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 man, that is not good. I haven't shaped the leather, pinged over this pin. Five minutes, Bladesmiths, five minutes remaining. Trying to ping over the palm area, it's definitely not moving the way I want it to. Victor just racing to get done in the closing seconds of this round. It's definitely a scramble. No way. I don't think I have enough time to finish my blade. Five, four, three, two, one, Blaysmith, shut down your machines, drop your tools, stop what you're doing. This second round of competition is over. Hell yeah. Oh, man. I am disappointed. I pictured uh, something completely different, so I'm pretty upset about that. All right, Bladesmiths, as you can see, there's a problem. We have your blades on display up here instead of out there on the testing floor. That's because we have some parameter issues. Trevor, your blade fulfills all the parameters. That means that you're moving forward to the next round because you hit all the marks. So please come forward and collect your blade. OK, I can't believe it. The first two rounds of this competition were very hard. So the surprise and shock of making it through to the third round, just unbelievable. Victor Mitchell, neither one of you bladesmiths have a butt cap that is peened onto your blades. However, we are going into a sudden death strength test. One of you will go forward, and one of you will not. We'll meet you on the testing floor. It's just down to me and Victor, and I'm sweating bullets. I have no idea what's going to happen from here on out. Gentlemen, welcome to the sudden death strength test. We're about to take your Iron Age knives and go Stone Age on them. We're going to take them and baton them into this stone. Only one of you will move forward from here. Victor, you're up first. You ready? Yes, I am. I'm going up against Mitchell, man. Holy We both didn't meet the requirements. 
So it comes down to who's the stronger or which handle is going to last the longest. So I'm just hoping for the best and expecting the worst. Going up against Mitchum and knowing that I don't have a good edge uh, or a um, pommel on it, I'm just hoping for the best and expecting the worst. Don't worry, Vic. We've got more bones. Well, Victor, uh, first things first, there are chips missing from the blade right here. This is where the bone hit and, and took chips with it. But it's all in one piece. Well done. Thank you. Mitchell, you're up. Let's do it, man. I know I've got a good, strong edge on this knife, but there's this giant, big-ass boulder sitting on the table. You know, I should have wrote Excalibur on the side of my knife, and I mean, I'm panicking. Mitchell, the way you heat treated this blade made it a really tough blade. It held up really well on this test. But there's your handle. It was just held together by glue, so that's a big issue. Yeah, I understand. All right, Mitchell, your blade has suffered a catastrophic failure, and therefore, your blade doesn't make the cut. And for that reason, you won't be moving forward in this competition. Come on forward, my friend. Appreciate it. Up, yeah, man, appreciate it. I make these handles all the time, but they're used for stabbing and slicing, not chopping into boulders. And hindsight, I would have put a pin through it to give it some mechanical holding ability. Bring it in here, brother. All right, man, I'll, I'll be hollering at you. I'm still proud of my knife. It's just that I should have made better choices in my handle construction. I'm just gonna go home and take what I learned here and do bigger and better things from here on out. Trevor, Victor, congratulations. You guys have made it into the third and final round of this competition. And now we're sending you to your home forges for four grueling days to recreate this iconic weapon from history. The Epi to Combat. Gentlemen, this blade can be seen wielded by Arya Stark from Game of Thrones. <laughs> The famous sword, Needle, wielded by Arya Stark in the Game of Thrones series, draws its inspiration from the Epi de Combat, an unassuming but vicious sword designed primarily for thrusting. The blade's light weight and needle point allowed for deadly thrusts as Arya inflicted vengeance upon her enemies. The Epi de Combat also featured a guard to protect the user's hand, a necessary feature for the weapon Arya used in her quest to avenge the Stark family. Bladesmiths, you have to recreate your own deadly version of this weapon that falls within the following parameters. The length of the blade must be between 31 and 33 inches and have a tri-fuller that runs the entire length of the blade. Additionally, you must have a guard, quillion, and pummel. You'll have four days at your home forges to recreate this weapon. At the end of those days, you'll return and present your swords to our panel of expert judges. After they've thoroughly tested them, they'll declare one of you, the Forge and Fire champion, who walks out of here with a check for $10,000. The weapon is a blade that I've always wanted to make, but the triangle section of the blade, that's gonna be a challenge. Good luck, bladesmiths. We'll see you in four days. It's day one, and I'm about to start making the F.A. de Combat. I've come to call it the holy sword because it is so thin and so long, it's gonna be a very, very difficult blade to make. I've chosen 5160. It's good, tough spring steel. I wanna make this blade as rigid as I can, but still flexible. But yeah, the wheels are turning. They're pretty rusty, but they're turning. It is the end of day one. I hit the length I was aiming for to a point where I think it's in good shape. I'm hoping to be grinding blade tomorrow. We're here in San Antonio, Texas. Let's get the fire going. I've never made such a light sword, so to make this as light as it's supposed to be is definitely a challenge. 
My plan is to use the 5160 for the actual sword itself, and then for the pommel and the guard, I'm gonna see if I can bang out some Damascus to throw my twist on it. It's too wide, so I'm thinning it down quite a bit, little at a time. Now that I got my sword to a comfortable state, I start cutting some pieces for billets, three small stacks so I can make my pommel, quillion, and guard out of Damascus. This is the start of day two, rolling along pretty good. Today, I'm going to start trying to put the crease in the back for the fullers. I've never ground fullers before. It's a huge learning curve for me, so it's going to be critical. I get the fuller cut into the back. I'm trying to grind on the front side, and they're not working. It's too hard to control this long, flexible blade, and it's not cutting to the depth that I wanted. It's grinding it flat. Ah. These fullers are what the entire profile of the blade is going to be based on. It could screw up the whole project. Yeah. It's frustrating the hell out of me. I've messed up my center line badly. I've got like six center lines now. This is not what I planned. I get the fuller cut into the back. I'm trying to grind on the front side, and they're not working. It's not cutting to the depth that I wanted. It's grinding it flat. It's frustrating the hell out of me. Yeah. I've messed up my center line badly. I've got like six center lines now. I wanted to have both sides of the fullers completed today. And I still got to get this blade quenched. So I hope that I can finish this blade. This day two, I'm trying to get the Damascus forge welded, sorted to shape. This is going to be my guard. Those are going to be my quillions. So right now, I'm just thinning it down so they don't have so much weight. I have the pommel billets, and I started drawing out the quillions. I think I'm happy with that. Now that I finish up the handle pieces, it's time to quench. You can see my blade shaking. I'm shaking so much right now. This is all do or die. I should straight that way. I should straight that way. I left it just a little bit thick so I can do all my hollow grinds. And then all I have left would be the fit up and put a handle. On day three, I need to finish grinding my fullers on both sides. I need to heat treat, and I need to shape it into the blade that it's going to be. Yesterday, I failed miserably at grinding fullers, so today has to go better, or I'm in trouble. I've worked my fullers down to a point where I'm satisfied, and I decided that it's time to quench. She took. I think that's pretty good. The Epi de Combat is supposed to be light and fast. And my blade turned out to be really thin and pretty light. I think it'll be a good blade. Final stretch, still a lot to do, and majority of the day is going to be on the handle. I'm going to go with some stabilized Buckeye Burrow. I have two different tones, and here to give it a good two-tone look. I like it so far. It's still a little heavier, but it's pieced together pretty good. I finished it! Thank God! Trevor, Victor, welcome back to the forge. You guys have had four days at your home forges to work on your finale weapons. Trevor, how'd it go for you? It went pretty well. I used 5160 steel for my blade, just mild steel for my guard, quillin, and pommel, and my handle is the sidewalls out of a tractor tire. All right, Victor, how'd it go for you? It went pretty well. I also used the uh, 5160. The guard, quillian, and pommel are low layer Damascus. I have two tones of Buckeye Burrow with uh, leather spacers. All right, gentlemen. To see how your blades perform, there will be a series of three tests. There will be a strength test, a sharpness test, and up first, the kill test. All right, bladesmiths, this is the kill test. I will take your weapon and deliver some thrust and slashes on our dummy from the north. Trevor, you're up first. You ready for this? I'm ready. Let's do it. I'm feeling nervous. I'm not worried that my blade isn't going to penetrate. I am worried that if it goes in and hits bone, it could break the very tip off. The tip is particularly thin. So yeah, I'm, I'm a little apprehensive.
All right, Trevor. First up, it is so light, just like a needle. Your point here allows for a very deep penetration without any effort. Overall, sir, it will kill. Good job. All right, Victor, your turn. So you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. I can't wait to see how my blade's gonna test, but uh, my Epidic Combat does still have some weight to it. It's supposed to be uh, fast and flexible and so forth, like needle. And so that's definitely in the back of my head. All right, Victor, let's talk about your sword here. It's not very light. Overall, though, it's pointy enough to thrust the edge with a weight, cuts, and it will kill. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test. To test the strength and overall construction of your blades, just like an ice pick, I'm going to be chipping ice. <laughs> Trevor, you're up first. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, Trevor, you did pick up a slight bend in your tip. Having said that, I mean, this thing is so light, which is fantastic. Thank you. All right, Victor, you are up. Are you ready, sir? Ready. Victor, first off, blade is the same shape as when we started out. Tip's still there, it's fine. Your fullers are there, but they're not very deep. And by not having them very deep, uh, this, this blade is, is very heavy. Uh, having said that, it's a strong blade. It took no damage, so well done. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths, this is the sharpness test, the steel can stab and water bag slice. I will take your weapon. I'm going to test the tip by thrusting into the cans, and I'm going to slash the bag. Try you up first. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. I'm concerned about the sharpness test. My tip caught a small bend during the ice test. The bend could cause a hard spot that my tip will break off when they start stabbing these cans. The tin cans concern me. My tip is bent. The bend could cause a hard spot that my tip will break off. All right, Trevor, no issues at all in stabbing into the can and the cut with your tip on that bag. You can see it's straight cut all the way through. Overall, sir, it will cut. Thank you. All right, Victor, your turn. So you ready? Ready. Let's do this.
All right, Victor, first stop in the stabbing test. On one of the thrusts, it pushed the cannon more than penetrated all the way through. But your edge is sharp on the bag, cut cleanly all the way through. More importantly, you will cut. Thank you. See the weapons perform. I think I'm toe-to-toe -to -toe with Trevor's blade, but uh, you know the weight of my blade uh, was hard to control, so I definitely think that hurt me. Victor's blade is a little heavier than mine, but uh, caught a small bend during the ice test. I'm concerned about it. We have a final decision. You yes. good? Absolutely. Dave? Yeah. Uh -huh. All right, gentlemen, I finished my discussion with your judges, and they've made their final decision. Our new Forged and Fire champion is... Trevor, congratulations. You're the new Forged and Fire champion. Victor, unfortunately, your blade didn't make the cut by the narrowest of margins, and David Baker's going to tell you why. Victor, the epi to combat was supposed to be a lightning-fast thrusting sword. The weight of your blade led it to be just a more difficult weapon to use. That's why we're letting you go. Victor, unfortunately, today, your blade doesn't make the cut. I'd like to invite you to shake our hands, shake your competitor's hand, and then please leave the forge. This was a great experience, and just uh, holding my head high just to know I've had this opportunity to build this historical weapon. It performed well, and I'm proud of it. First thing I do when I go home, kiss the wife, my son, and start forging and get ready for my next uh, knife show. Trevor, congratulations. You are our new Forged and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job, brother. Come on forward, my friend. Good job. I can't buddy. believe that I won Forged in Fire. I'm feeling better than good. The most fun I've had in years. With the $10,000, I may buy a new sander. Most of it will go to my wife, though.